On today's episode, we'll be talking about haunted houses, poltergeists, and much more. All coming up on this episode of Paranormal Mysteries. Thank you for joining me and welcome to the show. I am your host, Nick Ryan. I hope that everyone's had a great week. And before we start, I'd like to say thank you to Julio, Jacob, and Spooky Bev for their support and generosity. If you enjoy the show, please remember to subscribe, share, and review the podcast. This supports us by helping new listeners to discover the show. And if you'd like to support us even further by becoming a patron or by donating, please visit us at patreon.com slash paranormal mysteries or at buymeacoffee.com slash paranormal. These links and others can be found in the show notes. And if you've encountered the paranormal and would like to share your story, please email me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com. All experiences, no matter how big or small, are always welcome. And with that in mind, our first three stories of the night come to us from Chandler. And Chandler's first story is called The Reaper. Chandler says, I recently found your podcast and have been watching it all the way through. I told myself I wasn't going to submit any of my own experiences until I'm fully caught up. However, on episode 35, someone explained something that made me want to talk about one of my terrifying experiences that I've had. This might be a bit long, but I want to give it context. When I was little, my parents split up, and me and my older brother were mainly raised by my mom. However, we would go visit my father once or twice a year. This was always cause for excitement between me and my brother, who is five years older than me, because my dad was into the paranormal and would let us watch shows and movies with him while eating popcorn and both being terrified and intrigued. This continued through most of my childhood, earliest I remember being about eight and sleeping on his floor next to his bed while we fell asleep listening to Coast to Coast AM. I've always been open to the paranormal and had many experiences, And one time when we went to visit him, I believe I was about 14, I had one of the scarier experiences of my life. It was late one night, and my father had already gone to sleep, as well as my brother. My dad only had two bedrooms in the house that he was currently living in, so I had to sleep in the living room. This was fine with me because it had a TV, and I've always had to fall asleep with a TV on. I slept on a capital L-shaped couch where I was looking into the open kitchen. Directly to my left, about ten feet, was the wall to my dad's room, and at the far side of the kitchen was the hallway to the other bedroom, office and laundry room, etc. I was watching TV and trying to fall asleep, when I kept hearing a tapping noise in what sounded like the far side of the kitchen. I figured it was my brother messing with me, and I promptly said, Shove off! in a standoffish voice. It eventually stopped, and I was eventually able to drift off to sleep after setting a sleep timer on the TV so that it wouldn't stay on all night, just to help me fall asleep. I woke a few hours later to the TV turning back on. I was dizzy and groggy, so I just grabbed the remote and turned it back off. About 30 minutes passed, and again I was awakened by the TV turning on. A little upset and scared, I decided to sit up and grab some water. I then froze, as I saw on the left-hand side of my father's kitchen a dark figure. It was about twenty feet from me, and I could still tell that it had a hooded cloak on, and some type of scythe in its hand. The figure itself reflected no light from the TV or the dim lights in the kitchen, almost absorbing them, whereas the scythe's metal blade was. It stared at me as I stared at it while sitting up. This was not sleep paralysis. I was able to move, and I brought my hands up to rub my eyes and see if I was just still too delirious from waking up, but it was still there, staring at me. I grabbed the remote and after a minute said, Did you turn it back on? And at that point, the figure's shadowy arm shifted, as if lifting out in front of it, and I then got the most intense splitting headache I've ever had. I clutched my head in my hands, not able to let out a noise, still staring directly at it. This went on for over five minutes. I know that due to the program on the TV running in the background, because it had come back from commercial, and then when it stopped, it had gone to another commercial break. The figure didn't move after that, 
but the headache remained the whole time. I finally decided to lay back down from my upright position and force myself to go back to sleep, pulling the covers about my head. As soon as I did that, everything stopped, and I looked back and the figure was gone. The TV lulled me back to sleep, and I woke up the next morning, remembering everything. The craziest thing about this to me is that this happened nearly 10 years ago, as I'm 24 now, but I've never told anyone unless people ask for a scary story at a campfire or drinking with friends. I never told my father. He now lives in a house in a different city where I was visiting him a few years back. I decided to tell him what I experienced that night long ago, and after telling him, his face drained of all color, and he said to me, Why did you never tell me about this? I gave him the honest answer that I was not sure, and I just never told anyone. I asked him why he was so freaked out, and he told me that his then-girlfriend, now his fiance, had told him that she had once seen that same figure staring at her from the foot of the bed for almost ten minutes. Chandler's next story is called The Life-Saving Ghost, and this story involves a suicide attempt and may be too graphic for some listeners so please be warned. Chandler says, While I was younger, my father lived with his mother for a bit, trying to get his life back together after his and my mom's divorce. She lived in a small town in Arkansas, where everyone knew each other. There was this couple that my brother and I called Aunt Renee and Uncle Ted, even though they were not related to the family. They were just quite close to us. The house they lived in had multiple presences in it, and I personally loved staying there because I love the paranormal. Two of the presences were quite positive, with one of them being named Danny. I had many experiences in this house, but this was by far the most positive, in a strange way, as Danny saved a life one night. Me and my brother were in the living room, him watching TV and me sketching. My aunt had already gone to sleep for the night, and my father and uncle were next door trying to help the neighbor fix something. My aunt and uncle had taken in a girl by the name of Misty a few years earlier. She was a sweet girl, but was haunted by things that my young mind couldn't understand. Whereas I was eight, my brother was thirteen, and she was twenty-two. My brother suddenly asked me if I heard that. I perked my ears up, and sure enough there was a sort of scraping sound coming from the kitchen, which was to the front right of the living room we were in. I told him not to worry about it unless it gets louder or we hear something different. About a minute passes, and we hear metal shifting, like silverware sliding over one another. My brother decides to go and get my dad and uncle, so he exits the house to the back left of the living room. Knowing that it would take him about ten minutes to get there, tell them and come back due to us being in the country and houses being fairly far apart, I started to get uneasy. I don't know what told me to do it, but I slowly started making my way to the kitchen. The metallic sound continued as I got closer. However, as I rounded the corner, there was a thud. After entering the kitchen, I saw that a steak knife was laying on the ground, and the silverware drawer was open. I went over and put the knife back in the drawer, closed it, and turned back around to the entrance of the kitchen, where I saw him. I had never been told about Danny at this time, but after describing this to my aunt and uncle, they confirmed I saw him. Danny had sandy blonde hair and green eyes. He was about 5'10 or so and couldn't have been older than 25. He wore a plaid long-sleeve shirt that was made of a heavier material with long sleeves rolled up to his elbows. His face was one of desperation and insistence, and his arms were outstretched toward me. I can remember it like it was yesterday. He was dead still in that pose for no longer than a few seconds, and then he just disappeared as I blinked. I wasn't scared. I was actually overcome with a feeling of comfort, Afterward, I collected my thoughts, and I walked toward the entrance to the kitchen, and as I left, I was drawn to the hallway to my right. Something in me told me to go down the hall to Misty's room. I decided to listen to whatever it was that told me to do so, and as I got to her door, there was a noise on the other side that sounded like pacing back and forth. I swung open the door and was horrified at what I saw. Misty was laying next to her desk with the same kind of steak knife that I found in the kitchen next to her covered in blood. She had tried to end her own life by cutting up her leg, her arm, and her neck. She passed out due to blood loss, and I ran to wake up my aunt, and she called an ambulance. She was able to be saved, 
and I'm happy to say that she is married with two beautiful children now and living a happy life. But my aunt did tell me that if she had been left like that for even a few minutes longer, she would have died. Danny saved her life, and for that, I always thanked him when I visited their house afterwards. Chandler's next story is called Midday Rearranging, and Chandler says, I live in a two-bedroom apartment with my best friend since high school. He is a skeptic about the paranormal, where I have had many experiences, and am a strong believer. This one experience took place in broad daylight, which caught me as strange. My roommate goes to work very early in the morning, around 6 a.m., whereas I have an afternoon and night job, so I leave the apartment around 5 p.m. This happened a few months back. We often leave our bedroom doors open during the day because our AC in the apartment is terrible and it keeps our rooms cooler. I wake up on this day around noon to 1 p.m. after having worked until 3 a.m. and as I go out into the living room, I see that my roommate's door is closed. I don't think anything of it at first and decide to get some breakfast. Our kitchen is in the same open area as our living room and it's only about 20 feet from both of our bedrooms. As I'm getting some food out of the fridge, I hear some noises in his room. It sounds like shuffling of feet, and then a knocking sound that sounds like objects being moved. At this point, I also notice that his dog is not in her normal spot on the couch, sunbathing and laying on her side. In fact, she's found her way into my room and won't come out. For clarification, she never goes in my room, so that struck me as odd. She was also trying to hide her snout under her paws, as if she was scared. I then texted my roommate to see if his girlfriend was over and if he had left his door closed, but he replied no to both, which made my heart sink. I grabbed my revolver off of my nightstand, just in case we had an intruder, and slowly made my way to his room on the opposite side of the apartment. As I got closer, the noises didn't cease until I spoke. Hello? I heard one final shuffle, and then silence. I pushed open his door and noticed multiple things. Firstly, his room was far too dark, unnaturally so, than it should have been at 2 p.m. Also, his bed, which is normally made, had both of his pillows on the ground, and the comforter was folded into a makeshift star-like pattern. Lastly, many of the objects in his room, such as his headphones, controller, and keyboard, had been just randomly placed all over the ground. I went in and did a sweep for anyone in there, and found nothing. I righted all of his things and went back to fixing myself some food. The room seemed to lighten up within the next few minutes, but that was a very strange thing to wake up to. I don't know whether or not to tell him about this, as he is a skeptic, and we're moving out of this place at the end of our lease anyway. Our next story of the night comes to us from Samantha, and Samantha's story is called Haunted Home. Samantha says, Hi, Nick. I recently found your podcast on Spotify and have since been listening while I work as a delivery driver. All of these stories have made me want to share my own with the other listeners. The house that I grew up in from age 3 to 19 was oddly active. It was built in the mid to late 80s, I believe, and to my knowledge, wasn't built on anything sacred or active, although the whole neighborhood seemed to have experiences. Maybe I should look into it, as I know that Georgia has a lot of paranormal history. My parents bought the house and were the second owners back in 1999. At first, there wasn't much happening, other than the fact that my mother would hear crying every now and then. Thinking it was me, she would go check on me, and I would be asleep in my crib. My first experience, I don't know if it was a dream or an actual experience, but I used to sleep with my bedroom door open, and one night I saw a lady in a white dress walk down my hall. She locked eyes with me, smiled, and then waved. After that, I slept with my bedroom door closed, and I never saw her again. My second most memorable experience was when I was in early elementary school. I was watching the adventures of Jackie Chan, and being the excited little kid that I was, I would cheer him and his crew on. Jackie was fighting the bad guy, and I shouted, Go Jackie! And shortly after I did, I heard a deep voice in my ear saying the same thing. I later named this spirit Charles, and I will tell you more about him later, as he is my favorite. The voice was too deep to be my mother, and I could hear my father cooking in the kitchen as I was in my parents' room. My next story happened when I was in 8th grade. 
I would always get home from school before my parents would get home from work, so I would have the house to myself. I usually waited until nighttime to take a shower, but that day, I decided to take one when I got home. I was singing in the shower, and while I was in there, there were three forceful loud bangs on the underside of the tub. I was freaked out, but I wrote it off as pipes and went along with my shower, trying to finish as quickly as possible, continuing to sing to calm my nerves. Then there were three more loud bangs, and I jumped out, and I never experienced it again. Again in middle school, probably about three weeks after the last instance, my parents were at work, and so was the roommate that we had had at the time. She was a family friend, and now that I think about it, we had a lot of things happen while she lived with us. I was sitting on the sofa watching TV. The way that my house was laid out is if you walked in the front door into the living room, the back of the sofa was to the stairs. We had four stairs that went to the kitchen and dining room and garage area, and about eight stairs that went up to the three bedrooms, my bathroom, and the linen closet. With my back to the stairs, watching TV, suddenly all the doors upstairs started opening and slamming shut. I was terrified, and it felt like I jumped about ten feet in the air and I ran out of the front door and sat in the cold autumn air until my parents came home. I stayed on the phone with my best friend until they arrived. For the next story, I was in early high school, about ninth or 10th grade. I believe it was a Friday night, as I was up later than usual, meaning that I probably didn't have school the next morning, though I don't entirely remember. This happened around 11 at night, and from my bedroom door, it was about three steps a left turn, and a few more steps until I was into my bathroom. To my right, I could see all the way down the hallway into the living room, and I had a clear view of the TV and sofa. I was headed to the bathroom to take a shower, and as soon as I opened my door and headed to the bathroom, I heard screaming, fighting, and dishes breaking. I froze. I could hear my parents laughing in the garage, so I was sure that it wasn't them. My next thought was that it was the TV, so I looked to my right, and as soon as I did... I saw that the TV was off, and the commotion completely stopped. Finally, I'd like to talk about Charles, or as my parents called him, Casper. Casper never felt right to me, so I named him Charles, as it seemed to fit him better. Charles never did anything to hurt or scare anyone. I believe that the other instances were from passing spirits or entities attached to people that had been in my house that decided to make a little scare. Charles mainly moved things around, chuckled at us from time to time, and paced around my parents' bedroom. I miss him and his energy sometimes. I've never actually seen him, but I feel as though he is an elderly gentleman. Charles grew very fond of my parents, and moved with us when we left the house that I grew up in back in 2015. When we moved into our new house, Charles was very active exploring. At first, we thought it was another slightly haunted house, but I soon started to realize that it was the same energy, as Charles remained pacing in my parents' bedroom. My parents and I moved two more times after that, and Charles followed us every time. They now live in a house that they own instead of rent, and Charles is still there. Sometimes when I'm there alone, I'll hear him walking around, and if I take my daughter over there, she looks into my parents' bedroom into the darkness, and waves and says hi. My parents also have three dogs that are unbothered by Charles. I hope you enjoyed my stories and experiences, and if this ends up on the podcast, I hope the other listeners enjoy them as well. If you're interested, I have many more stories from that house, as well as the apartment I currently live in with my boyfriend and daughter. Thank you for providing this community, and thank you for sharing these stories. Samantha As we come to the end of tonight's episode, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and supporting the show. And a special thank you goes out to Chandler and Samantha for sharing their experiences with all of us. If you've experienced something that you can't explain, please contact me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com or visit paranormalmysteriespodcast.com and click on the Tell Your Story link. All of our contact information can be found in the show notes. Until next time, I hope you all have a safe and healthy weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday with our next episode. From all of us at Paranormal Mysteries, thank you for listening, and please remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it.